happy Monday and welcome back to the Adams Eats Kitchen. Now I should first quickly apologise for not having a video up on Friday. Uh, long story short, I was stressed out, I'd burnt myself out with work and I just needed some time to relax. So sorry about that, but sometimes you just gotta think of yourself, right? But now I feel well rested, contented, happier, so we can crack on and make a recipe. I should also apologise if you hear lots of buzzing and whirring and angle grinders and stuff. There's a brand new block of flats being built right at the back of me and there's kind of workmen just buzzing away and stuff. So if you hear any of that, I'm sorry, I can't do much about it. Right, anyway, onto the recipe. So I'm gonna make a sausage and butter bean casserole. And as always, like most of my recipes, it's gonna be really simple to make. It's comforting. And also because it's getting a bit nippy, you know, if you live in England, you know how cold it's getting at the minute. Uh, it's gonna be nice and warming. All thrown in in one part, so there's less washing up. And it's gonna be cheap as chips as well. So let's crack on with it. If you look down below in the description, you can get a list of those ingredients. And as always, if you press that pause button now, you can get a list of them there as well. And the first thing we need to do is brown off some sausages. Right, okay, so let's talk about the sausages. Now, because this is quite a frugal dish and there's not a lot going into it, it's really important that the ingredients that you are using are good quality. And most importantly, the sausages. Don't go and buy cheap bangers, all right, because it won't taste nearly half as good. Now, I'm using venison sausages, just because they were cheap. I mean, these were reduced to £2.40 from £3.20, so I've got a nice little bargain there. You can use whatever you like. Italian sausages with fennel and garlic are really nice. Toulouse sausage, and not forgetting our very own Lincolnshire as well, which is really nice. But just make sure they're really good quality. So all I'm gonna do is just take a knife, you know, take them out of the packet. There's six in here, and this dish will feed about three or four people, no problem. And then what I'm gonna do is just squeeze out the meat from its skin, just like that. And then just pinch off little balls, just like that, and then stick them in your pan. Each sausage, you should probably get about three little balls like that. So it's really simple to do. I'm gonna crack on with these, and I'll see you in a bit. Right, okay, so we've got our sausage pieces in the pan here, and I'm just gonna add just a little bit of oil. Not too much, because there's gonna be fat in those sausages. This is just to get it going. And then put the pan onto a nice high heat. And just off camera here, I've got a lidded casserole pot, which I'm gonna transfer everything into uh, before we put it in the oven. So these are gonna brown for about three to four minutes, and whilst they're getting on with that, we'll slice up some bacon. Okay, so I've got my bacon here. Get it out of the packet. Now I'm using smoke because it's got lots of flavor and I think I'm gonna use about four rashers. Let's get that out of the way. And then really simply just taking a knife, gonna roughly chop them into chunks. You want quite large chunks because this dish is also about texture as well as flavor. So you want nice bite-sized pieces of bacon in there. Okay, just like that, really, really simple. And my sausages are nice and browned off so I'm gonna get those into our casserole dish. And then keeping the pan on the heat, we'll chuck our bacon in and get that nice and crisp. And just like you did with the sausages, we're gonna brown this bacon till it's nice and crisp, and then we'll transfer it to the casserole dish. Right, so after I've transferred the bacon and the sausage to our casserole dish, in here is pure gold, right? We wanna keep this fat. Now I've turned the temperature down to nice and low, and now we're gonna add one onion, which I've just finely sliced. And I'm just gonna cook these down nice and gently for about five minutes, just until they go nice and soft and translucent. And they're gonna take on the flavor of the bacon and the sausage, so nothing goes to waste. It's all about building layers of flavor, folks. Right, so after a few minutes, you can see the onions have gone quite soft. So next I'm gonna add two finely chopped garlic cloves. These are quite fat, juicy ones. You know, but I really like garlic. Again, keeping it on quite a low heat. And then just a little bit of plain flour, not much, all right? We're not looking for a really thick sauce at the end of this. We want, we want it quite light, but I do want it a little bit thick. So I'm gonna add about half a dessert spoon of plain flour, and then just mix that all up. And that's gonna soak up all that fat and kind of make like a roux, I suppose. And all you wanna do is just cook that garlic and flour out for about 30 seconds. And then again, just transfer that over to your casserole dish. Also at this point you want to preheat your oven to gas mark 6 so it's nice and hot, ready for it to go in. Now what I'm going to do is turn the heat up to maximum and then to the pan I'm going to add a generous glass of white wine and then just reduce that by half and what that'll do is just take out the raw alcohol flavour because you don't want that harsh alcohol bitter taste in your food. All right? If you've ever had a dish 
and you've gone, whoosh, that tastes really whiny. That's why, because it hasn't been reduced and you know, allowed to mellow out. Okay, it doesn't take long at all. In fact, that's already done. You can see it's reduced by half. It's gone kind of syrupy and a bit thick. We'll get that into the pan as well. And look how clean that pan is. There's hardly anything left on there because all that flavor is now in there. So turn off the heat. And now what we need to do is slice up some cabbage. Right, okay, cabbage. Now I'm using Savoy cabbage. You can use whatever cabbage you like really. But I just think Savoy is nice with this. It's got a nice irony flavor. It adds lots of color as well and it's got a nice texture. Now what do most people do when they slice a cabbage? They just kind of take a knife to it and then just start hacking and slicing into it. Don't do that because I'm gonna show you an easy way on how to slice it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the leaves. You know, just use your judgment on how many you need. I'm probably gonna use about six, I would say. Now what we wanna do is take out this tough inner core because for the length of time we're gonna cook this casserole, which is quite short, that's not gonna cook down, so it's gonna be really tough and stringy. So all I'm gonna do is just take my knife and just run either side of the stalk, like so, and then just nip it off at the end like that. You can get rid of that, and then what you'll end up with is a nice cabbage leaf like that. And all you need to do is just do the same with the rest of the leaves. Okay, so once you've removed the core from the cabbage leaves, I've just stacked them all together. And then all you need to do is just kind of roll it up into a cigar, like that, nice and tightly. And then taking a sharp knife, just cut into strips. And it's as easy as that. You've got your nice ribbons of cabbage. Now I need to get this into a colander because we need to wash it. Right, okay, so I've washed the cabbage, you know, got rid of any mud and bugs and things like that. And I've just put it in a bowl of cold water whilst we get on and finish this. So to the sausage and bacon mix, I'm gonna add two tins of butter beans, which I've drained, two bay leaves, which I'm just gonna squish in my hand, and then a good dose of black pepper. Don't put any salt in it this time because you're gonna make those butter beans go hard. So just enough pepper, I would say about a quarter of a teaspoon. You can always season it more later on, but remember you can't take away once you've put it in. Give that a good old mix. And now we're gonna add some chicken stock. Again, it all depends on the size of your vessel, how much you need. But you want it to just come underneath the beans and the sausage. You don't wanna completely submerge it. I've used about 450 ml there. Okay, and all we need to do with that is pop the lid on and that can now go in the oven. Now I'm gonna cook that in the oven for about half an hour so all those flavors can get to know each other, everything kind of cooks through, those beans go nice and soft and absorb that flavor and the sausage is cooked through as well. And then we'll take it out, we'll add the cabbage. You don't wanna put it in at the beginning because it's gonna overcook and it's gonna go all mushy. You still want that nice flavor and you also want the texture as well. And then we'll put it back in for about another 10, 15 minutes until the cabbage is cooked. We'll add a touch of fresh parsley and then it's done. Now whilst that's cooking away in the oven, you can do whatever you like, sit down, read a paper, watch some TV, or do something socially unacceptable and drink wine from a mug. Cheers. Don't really like white wine on its own. Right, okay, so as you can see, after about 30 minutes, I took it out of the oven, added the cabbage on top, and then I put it back in the oven for about another 10 minutes. You may need to add a bit more stock. Uh, I think in total, I used about 700 mil. It also may look like a lot of cabbage when you put it on top, but it does wilt down so you can mix it all together and be absolutely delicious. So it's been about 10 minutes now. I think it's ready, so let's get it out of the oven. Right, let's get it out and have a look. Whoosh. Let's take that lid off. Oh, smells fantastic. I'm just gonna taste that cabbage just to make sure it's done. Amazing. Still got a nice bit of crunch to it. So now let's finish it off with a nice handful of chopped parsley. Mix that in. And I'm just gonna taste for seasoning. Some of that broth. Doesn't need any salt whatsoever. There's plenty in that bacon and the stock as well. And that's it, that's ready. We can serve this up and give it a taste. Right, okay, so I've served it up, folks, in this nice little fancy bowl. Got some toast with it as well. Now this is no job for a fork you need a spoon for this. Let's dig in. I'm gonna try and get a bit of everything, some of that broth, some of that bacon, 
cabbage and those meatballs as well. Let's go in. The first thing that hits you is that broth. It's really flavoursome, got the smokiness from that bacon and it doesn't need any salt. There's plenty of salt in it, but again, you might need to adjust that depending on what stock you use. Those sausage meatballs add loads and loads of flavour, which is why it's really important that you use good sausages. The butter beans are really nice and creamy and they've taken on the flavour of that bacon and also that stock as well. Now you could use potatoes, you could even use pasta if you want, but butter beans are really cheap, they're really versatile, but they've got a really pleasing texture, which isn't too dissimilar to potato, but they're really good. Well, there we are folks. That is my sausage and butter bean casserole. Really warming, really hearty, simple to make, and as always, it tastes wizard. Well, there we are folks. Hope you enjoyed the recipe. I'm gonna have to be quite quick because the battery light on my camera is running out, and I'm also feeling a bit tipsy from that wine. I don't know, it's just gone. <laughs> It's gone straight to my head. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think of the recipe. And also if you've got any suggestions and things you want me to make, then leave those in the comments as well. Also stick around at the end because there'll be some links to some of the videos. And if you're not a subscriber, there'll be a button for that as well. And as always, I'll see you fine folks next time for more tasty fun and frolics. And bye for now.